Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tronage and today we are talking about the no gyro problem that you may get on HGL RC XJB145 and how to fix it. Stick around. I was filming doing a modification to change the TX20 version 1 video transmitter in my HGL RCXJB145 and take that out and put the new 2.0 version of that same transmitter into the quad. And in the process, I actually discovered I had the no gyro issue that a lot of people have had, especially with the first generation of these quads that came out. First, let me say it had nothing to do with my swapping out of the video cards. It actually had to do with having a crash when I flew it last prior to then filming the video of swapping out the video transmitter. But how do you know you have this problem? Well, one, when you turn on your quad, it'll sound something like this. So if you hear something that sounds like that when you turn on your quad, you're gonna have the no gyro problem. Other ways to know are if you have the warnings turned on in your OSD and you go to arm, it'll say like no gyro. And if you're in beta flight, the calibrate accelerometer button will be missing or grayed out. And when you move your quad around, you won't see that little 3D version of the quad moving. So there's a lot of ways to know you have the problem, but the real question is how you fix it. Well. What the source of it is essentially, from what I gather, is the soldering job on the gyro chip. Uh, it was a little sketchy on the first run of the boards and can kind of break because it's very kind of fragile-ish, not expialidocious. After a crash or so, it can become a little disconnected and not function. It's not 100%. It's like barely making contact. So the quick fix for that is reflowing that solder. Now, this is not a beginner's guide to reflowing and reworking surface mounted devices. This is the what I did to fix it. And if you wish to do this to use at your own risk, this may not be the right way. This is just what I did and what fixed it for me. So I'm just going to talk you through it. I took my handy dandy flux. This is a jar of flux that I've had for years. I bought it at Radio Shack to give you an idea of how old it is. Um, but really you just need any kind of paste flux. So you don't want really a liquid. I don't think I think a paste would work best. I used a toothpick, scooped a little bit out, and I basically went around the whole perimeter of the chip so that there was flux in there. Now, if you don't know what flux does, it essentially helps solder flow. If you've ever tried to solder and it doesn't want to form into a nice little ball, it kind of starts pulling and getting all weird that's because it doesn't have any flux. It's not letting it flow. It's kind of sticking to everything. What flux lets it do is it sort of wants to cling to itself and ball up and be all nice and pretty. That's what flux kind of does. It helps solder flow. So by putting the flux all around the chip, you're going to promote any solder that gets heated up to want to reflow and ball up and be nice and pretty, if you will. Next, I used a heat gun. Now, this is the heat gun I used. Picked this one up at uh, Harper Freight. I've had it for, again, years. Years and years, I've had the same heat gun. The problem with this heat gun is that the nozzle is rather big. And when we're trying to do a fine thing here, we want to heat up just what we want to heat up. We don't want to heat up the whole board because we're not trying to rework the whole board. We are just trying to reheat the gyro. So I needed to adjust this. So I picked up one of these little doohickey things. It was not made for this heat gun. I modified it by cutting it and bending it and making it so this will sit onto this gun. This is not ideal. This is not proper for this heat gun. And I don't recommend you do, I don't recommend you buy this heat gun and buy this thing and put this on the top. You can just buy heat guns that come with nozzles that are small like this. You can pick them up on eBay for like $35, but I already had this. So this is what I used. Now, what I did is you want to set it to its highest, hottest setting, but the slowest and least windy setting. So 
This has high and low speed for the airflow and it has temperatures. So for this heat gun, for me, I had it set on low fan, but I had it set on the 800 degree Fahrenheit, which is the highest setting it goes to. Why? Because when you're doing this, it's not so much about the temperature. Yes, we want to get the solder to a melting point temperature, but if we set this to be around 400 degrees, which is the melting point of the solder, we'll be sitting here all day long heating the whole board up and then all the components are going to all be brought to 400 degrees and that can actually damage things. What we're trying to do is blast it real fast, melt all the surface solder, and then get the heat away real quick so that it can cool and that heat doesn't have a chance to penetrate into the components and damage them, okay? And the reason why we're using a low fan instead of a high fan is because once that solder gets liquid, it could blow components away and we don't want it to. We wanna keep everything where it is on the board. We don't want it to like blow everything away. So, lowest fan, highest temperature held it completely vertical because if you blow it at an angle, you're gonna blow things away. If you hold it vertical and a little bit higher up from the board, you're going to just heat that area in like a little cone and hopefully not blow things off of it. It'll just kind of blow them down into where they already are and not blow them off of the board. So for example, here's the thing. I held it about here-ish and just kind of started heating. How did I know when I went far enough? Well, because right next to this gyro chip are the connections for my camera and the connections for my video transmitter. They're all on little blobs of solder. What I was doing is as I was holding this, I put a tiny bit of tension with my fingers. You know, this is sitting on the counter and I'm tiny bit pulling on these wires. Not tugging hard, but enough so that once these little balls of solder that are right in front of that gyro chip softened enough to let me pull the wires out of them, I knew that that solder got melted. So the solder on the gyro chip had to have gotten melted. So I basically, and then all of a sudden, whoop, my wires pulled out, take the, take this away and then I just let it cool and let it go completely cool to the touch so everything's nice and happy and cool and then I went back in with my soldering iron not the heat gun but my soldering iron and reattached all my wires on the front here for the camera and for my video transmitter this is the gyro chip in question for doing the reflowing I took my flux paste with the toothpick and I went all around, you can still see a little residual of it. I went around the whole perimeter of this little chip. And then I used the hot air gun blowing straight down on it until I felt I was holding it like this with these wires and I was putting a little bit of tension pulling on them like this. And once these wires went bloop and pulled out, I knew that these solder joints had softened and liquefied. So if these solder joints so liquefied, the solder joints around the perimeter of this chip had to have liquefied. I immediately removed the hot air gun, let it all cool, and then I reattached my wires that I pulled off. Then I tested it, and it works perfectly fine. In fact, just for you guys, this is the same one that was having the problems that you just saw in the video. And now, after doing exactly what I described to you, No, no gyro problem anymore. So that's how I fixed it. Use at your own risk. If it doesn't work for you, a lot of people have tried doing this. You read in the message boards and stuff how they fixed it and they said they tried doing reflowing it and it didn't work. My suspicion is they tried reflowing it but they didn't heat it enough because I'm using these solder pads in the front as an indicator when the solder is melted because if you go too far, too hot, and too long, you can actually damage stuff on the board. So you wanna, it's a very, it's a very fine line that you're looking for. It's not for the weak of heart, and I wouldn't say this is, you shouldn't really try this if you're a beginner, because you could end up just wiping out the whole board entirely. So, but that's what worked for me. Flux, high heat, 
low fan. I had it heating for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. And then the moment my wires pulled out of the front, I knew the solder was, you know, melted, took the heat away. Let it cool, put my wires back on with the soldering iron and all seems well and good. So no more no gyro problem, you know, showing you what I did and how it worked. And I'll keep you posted. If I run into a problem, I'll make another video and it'll be in this playlist. But that's your quick tip, how to fix that no gyro problem using basically a hot air gun and some flux. And that's it. It's not hard. It's just kind of scary if you don't really know what you're doing. So that's why I'm trying to help you talk you through it. So hopefully that helps you out, fixes your problem. If you have that issue, that's what I did. And it worked for me. So far, I'll keep you posted. So as always, my name's Tronage. Fly strong. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you really should subscribe. I'm always posting new content. If you'd like to help support the channel and get access to giveaways, raffles, and other exclusive benefits, consider joining the Tronage family on the Patreon page. Here's some videos that you might be interested in. This is the latest one that I posted, and this one I think you might just like. Go check them out.